One of the many fine technological achievements of the Apollo program, and a decidedly very cool addition to the last three manned missions to the moon, was the lunar rover. Nearly stealing the show from its human operators, this little moon buggy that could allowed the astronauts to explore over many miles of the moon's surface. All three of the rovers that went to the moon now spend their retirement there. And they will be there long after the pyramids have crumbled into the Sahara sands. Let's go down and see where the first rover, or LRV, made its debut. This film is from Apollo 15. It was taken by Jim Irwin using 16 millimeter film while Dave Scott drove the rover. This segment of film is from their second extravehicular activity excursion, EVA-2. By studying the footage, comparing it to photographs, and referring to the audio of a later segment, I've been able to locate where this filming took place. It was between Station 6 and 6A. Why is this important? Some people have claimed that we never went to the moon. Despite the fact that their arguments invariably demonstrate an alarming lack of logic, common sense, and specific knowledge, and have all been completely debunked, these hoaxers egotistically and stubbornly persist in their false accusations of fraud. I have made numerous videos discrediting the claims of hoaxers, and this video includes what I consider to be one of the more convincing proofs that we did, in fact, go to the moon. To get all of this filming into one video, I have doubled the speed. Since the camera is mounted on a mast which is attached to the rover, it will stay approximately 90 degrees to the ground. It is difficult to tell that the rover is on a substantial slope right now. It is tilted down to the right. I am adjusting the tilt of the video to show the true horizontal. In the distance, Hadley Rill can be seen as the rover stops at 6A. I have superimposed this still photo taken at 6A over top of the running video. Both this and the next photo match the film extremely well. We can see Dave Scott moving in front of the rover. Some hoaxers believe the rover films could have been made using miniature components. We did not have the ability in those days to make robots of this quality. Here the film stops, and starts again later, as Scott and Irwin leave Station 7. 
heading north back in the direction of the Lem, which is just under three miles away. I would invite hoaxers to take any portion of this video, foreground, background, compare it to LRO pictures or ground photographs from NASA and try to find any inconsistencies at all. They simply will not be there. In YT Moog's video of this, there is audio in which the dialogue makes it clear where they are. The remainder of this Traverse film is uncut. And now, let's get to the good stuff. Notice how the ground is bright and low contrast when the sun is behind. This is a common effect on the moon and it makes objects hard to see. But watch carefully as rocks appear in the distance and go by. Yet, the mountain, which is several miles away, does not change. Neither does the lighting. This would be virtually impossible in an indoor set. Now, as they turn to the right, heading more across sun, the ground gets darker and features are easier to see. This is why, in some photographs, the surface is slightly darker on one side than it is on the other. In those photos, the sun will always be past the edge of the darker side of the picture. Watching Mount Hadley in the background, one can see that it hardly changes size or shape during this film segment. The same was true of background objects in the Traverse from 6 to 6A. Yet we can see objects appearing in the distance, getting closer and larger, and then passing them. The reason Mount Hadley doesn't change size or shape is because it is several miles away, just as the previous mountain was. If this film was longer, we would be able to detect slight changes. I do not believe that we had the film, video, and editing techniques in 1971 to make something like this possible. Star Wars wasn't made until six years later and even George Lucas never achieved the effect of this kind of approaching foreground in unbroken contact with a background which is clearly at much greater distance. And now for a little video closing entertainment. Remember David Percy and his lens flare that he claimed was wires supporting the astronauts? A momentary glint. And again, run slowly. Well, I found something at the very beginning of this film which should launch him and other hoax believers into paroxysms of moronic rapture. And again.